problem. Good afternoon, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. My name is Nayoka Robinson, and I am a licensed insurance and investment agent with a fiery passion for helping people experience the ultimate luxury, which is a debt-free life. From my own experience of overcoming massive debt and financial challenges, I have a lot of testimonies, but not only that, I've also helped clients to overcome whatever challenges they were experiencing to live a debt-free life. And this is just proof that cultivating healthy financial habits leads to a more fulfilling life. So today I will be sharing with you some of the things that I've learned, but like I said before, for those of you who were on here early, please scan the QR code, register so that I can share some wonderful information with you once the session is, has ended. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them. I will also give you an opportunity to ask questions in the end. So don't be shy. As a matter of fact, as the session is going on, I'm going to ask for you to participate starting now please drop in the chat which part of the city you are in i want to see where everybody is even if you're not in toronto please just let us know where you're hailing from you know say hi to each other let's get acquainted if you don't know each other already let's get more familiar with each other guys this is a place where we're coming to support and learn and grow together all right. Today we are talking about money and I want you after you type your location in the chat to raise your hand if you are allergic to money. Please, please, please raise your hand. I see Yvonne laughing. That means she's not allergic to money. If you are allergic to money, grab your EpiPen because you are about to go into shock. There has been a lot of talk in the last couple of years about you know the market being volatile and should i invest should i not invest what should i do i'm gonna keep my money under my mattress or in a box i've met people who are putting their money in an envelope in so many different places but guys i'm here to share with you that there's no need to be afraid there's no need to panic as long as you understand the rules of money and you are maintaining good financial financial habits, you will be financially well off. Today, we're talking about financial wellness and building a secure financial future, right? Um, as we look into that today, we will look at what it means to be wealthy. And before I even read what's on the screen, I want one brave volunteer to unmute and share with me what their idea of wealth is. Somebody, anybody, don't let me call somebody because it might be Jenna, surprised if I call on. Go ahead. <laughs> being able to pass on generational um, assets. To, Ooh, I love that, Nikisha. To those that come after you. And awesome. just keep going and going and going and growing. I love that. So infinite source of finance or money. I thank you, Nikisha. Thank you. I appreciate you stepping up and contributing. Wealth, well, when you talk to me or when I sit with my clients, I talk, I ask them, what would they like their rich life to look like? So if I were to wave a magic wand for you and say you could have whatever you want financially, what would you want that to look like? And for me, that is what wealth is. Whatever your ideal financial situation is for you, that is wealth. But we're going to go with a more textbook definition here. Wealth or financial wellness refers to the overall health and stability of your financial situation. It's not just about having a high income or accumulating wealth. Instead, it's about how well you manage your finances, how well you plan your financial future, and how well you cope with financial stressors. Like I said, last year, people were talking about how crazy the market is, and honestly, it was crazy. Let's, let's just be real. The market was 
crazy. But if you are in good financial health, the impact wouldn't have been great as great. So today, what we are going to do is try to help you to understand what it means to be wealthy. And by the way, I spell wealthy with an H just because, you know, we want to be physically healthy as well as financially well. So when I talk about wealthy, I'm saying, you know, we have to do both. And with that in mind, guys, there are certain things that happen when your wealth is not in place. Stressors, um, problems that you may experience and i'm gonna ask you guys to type in the chat for me really quick something some issues that you can experience if you don't have your finances in order doesn't have to be specifically you but just give us some general ideas of things that people may experience if they're struggling financially Just looking at the chat. So we have people from Scarborough. Hey, Yvonne, you're in my neighborhood. Um, Brampton, Mississauga, Ottawa. Um, Amanda, welcome. Oh, she's walking the dog. Stoville, Jardine, you're in my old neighborhood. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, M. Wells says, homelessness. Listen, I've had clients who have experienced homelessness, poverty, depression. Um, Yvonne says, losing your house, anxiety. Oh my God, there are so many people who suffer from anxiety when their finances are low or when they don't have the money to meet their means, right? Buy food to put on the table, buy clothes to put on their back. You're constantly thinking, am I going to make it to next month? What is going to happen to me? But guess what? We have a solution. And the solution is to make sure that you're managing your money properly, even if you are in a state of homelessness or poverty, that does not have to be the end of it all. I have said it before, I'm saying it again, I have had clients who were homeless. They met me this month, they're homeless. Next month, they have their own apartment. Guys, it's not impossible. So we're going to look at some ways that money can make magic for you, right? Now, if your finances is in order, it reduces the stress and anxiety. So that's the first thing that I mentioned out of all the things that you guys have in the chat. Here are some of the ways that money, because by the way, I'm bringing this up because some people think that money is the root of all evil. But I am here to share with you that money is a tool that can help you to help others. It can help you to help yourself and it can help you to achieve the things that you want to achieve in life. It does not have to corrupt who you are at your core. All right. So it helps to solve financial problems, right? Stress, like I said before, is one of the leading cause when you're facing mounting that you're worried about how you're going to achieve basic things. Then once you have money in place, you can improve your physical health. Listen, um, I remember when I was living back up in Richmond Hillside, you know, I was working a nine to five job and I did not have a war in sight. I went to the gym. I was eating um, sprouted grain bread and all the, these things like, you know, the finest of the finest is what you enjoy when you have the money to do what you need to do, right? And even if it's not a massive amount of money that you have, when you have enough money to make the right choices, you will find yourself not only mentally healthier, but also physically healthier, right? You also experience enhanced relationships and I'm using my personal stories because I don't want to share any client stories, break any confidentiality. I will tell you, my mom, 
God may her soul rest in peace. She's not with us anymore. But when she was alive, sometimes we would butt heads. And when I look back at it, we butt heads because she was like, Nayoka, I want lobster for dinner. And I'm like, mommy, what is wrong with the chicken that's in the fridge? <laughs> right? Um, we constantly had that tension and it was around money. When you don't have that stressor on your shoulder about money and how you can afford the things that you genuinely want or the things that make you happy, then you aren't able to maintain the same quality of relationships. So having money in your pockets, enough money in your pocket, helps you to build better relationships, not only with your friends, but also with your family. Think about spouses who are constantly at odds because they don't see eye to eye on how to manage money. Actually, I have a friend who got divorced because his wife insisted on spending every single dollar even before they got it while he was more conservative and wanted to plan for the future. Now, with money or with your money in the right place, your money working for you, you will also have financial security, Dirt, right? This is a sense of stability, knowing where your resources are and how you can use your resources, not only to meet your current needs, but your future needs and those unexpected things that will come up while you are living. Another thing that you will experience, which is one of my preferred things, is you have greater freedom and opportunity. Right now, I can travel whenever I want to because I'm not tied to a nine to five, right? I am my own boss. I own my own business. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, just because the opportunity is there. When you have that money, you have greater opportunities. And I will not only talk about time freedom, when it comes to taking advantage of investment opportunities, you are in a position of power when you have control over your money. And speaking of power, it gives you that sense of empowerment and you have independence. You're no longer reliant on your boss. You're no longer reliant on your friends or the bank to borrow money to achieve the things that you need. You can rely on yourself. You can even go as far as creating your own bank to ensure that you feel completely empowered in all your financial choices. Now, I said a lot and you know, I am hoping that you guys are absorbing the things that I'm saying and reflecting on your own situation because this is the purpose of what we're going into. I want you to be able to visualize where you are and where you would like to go, but don't get ahead of the class just yet. We are going to start by talking about budgeting. It is not about what you earn. It's also about what you keep. Now, when a lot of people hear about budget, in there like, mm -mm, I'm not going to budget because it's going to be restrictive. I'm not going to be able to buy the things that I want to buy. I don't want to budget. It's so hard. And no, let's just not think about budget that way. Budgeting is actually something that's freeing. You know exactly how much money is coming in, where that money is going and how much money is going out. And if we're going to look at the definition, budgeting is a process of creating a plan for your money. It's like, think about it. Um, I think it was Amanda that says she's in Ottawa. Nikisha is in um, the GTA, right? Imagine Nikisha going to visit Amanda. It's her first time and she decides that she's not going to use a GPS. Now, Nikisha may end up in... Fort Murray or she may end up in Sault Ste. Marie or somewhere else except Ottawa because she's not using the GPS. Or she may just be this close to Ottawa and because she does not know where she's going, she decides that she's going to stop or she's going to turn back or she's going to give up. Your budget is your GPS. Your budget is your map. Your budget is a thing that helps you to know where you are, how far along on the journey you are, and it identifies where you are going as well, depending on the type of budget that you are using, right? It, it gives you 
basically an idea of what you'll spend and save over a specific period. It helps you to allocate your income towards various expenses and saving goals. Now, if you go on the internet and type in budget, oh my gosh, you will find so many options, so many things, so many ways that you can budget your finances. However, we are going to focus on two main things. And before we get into those two options, I want to share with you how the budget helps. It, Like I said before, you can track your spending and identify areas that you can save. This is another thing that instead of typing this in the chat, I want you guys to unmute and tell me, one thing that you may be able to save on if you were able to create a budget, just something that pops up in mind. I know one thing off the top of my head, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to steal anybody's answer. But give me some ways that you think that you can save. Mm -hmm. Couponing. Hey, what did you say? Uh, couponing. All right, couponing. So looking for those things. All right, that's one thing, one way. Anybody else? Mitigate your streaming. People would be surprised how they're being overcharged for various fees and services that they're not using. Mm -hmm. So we'll go over all of that because it all adds up. So I see, I'm just about to deal with Audible right now. You know, I got charged yes. from Audible and I put my service on pause, but they still slid in there and try to take money. No. So you got to be on top of that because one time that happened with Amazon and Amazon had to recoup and send me back the money because they were charging me both on my Amazon.com account for Prime and my Amazon.ca, but I was oh. only using .com. Oh, wow. Yeah, See, so, so things like that, it adds up. Yes, and I'm glad that you said that, Nikisha, because one of the things that I love to do with my clients is to go through the subscriptions. You would be so surprised how many things that we are paying for that we're not actually using. So one of the things that I will send you after this session is a subscription tracker. I will also send you a sheet for guys, I'm making it as simple as possible. I could send you this uh, spreadsheet with everything, but I want it to be clear and simple for you. So I'm sending you a subscription tracker. I'm sending you a tracker for bank fees because we have credit cards, we have bank accounts, we have all these different things, NSF, that we're paying the bank for that we don't account for when we are thinking about our income and our expenses. So imagine when you actually last year, I had a seven day challenge and the people who participated in the challenge, Canadians, when they looked at their subscriptions, they were able, the person that won was able to save over $1,000 per month on subscription costs, costs. And the second person um, saved $500. So imagine if you could save $500 to $1,000 per month just by reviewing your subscriptions. Amanda, I saw that you had your hand up. Go ahead. Whoops, sorry. Um, I was thinking about in your emails, whenever you sign in a store to get future like 10% off, just unsubscribing to those because having that pressure, especially during holiday seasons, is like an automatic like, oh, it's on sale. I might as well buy it. That is another thing. I can't tell you how many places that I've unsubscribed from over the last week. I can't walk about, I can't move. So I'm sitting there unsubscribe, unsubscribe. I love that, Amanda. Guys, unsubscribe because it's a way to get into your brain, right? They are constantly there and they're constantly telling you to buy. All right. Budgeting also ensures that you have enough money for essentials like housing, food, utility. We don't want to get into a place where we cannot pay the rent. We cannot pay our bills. Yes, um, I will tell you later on a little secret about these things, but they're essential and we need them in order to survive, especially in Canada. Can you imagine a winter without electricity? 
We don't want that, right? Um, it helps you to plan for future expenses such as emergency, major purchases. So if you haven't purchased your house yet, your kids are going to school, you are going to school, retirement, these things, you're able to plan ahead for them. And you get to save for long-term goals. Now, the two different budgeting techniques that I want you guys to take note of is the 50 30 20 rule and the zero based budgeting rule. Now, the first one essentially it is as simple as it is. You're going to allocate 50% of your income towards your needs. Then 30% of your income goes towards your wants. And guys, I don't want you to confuse your wants with your needs. I know some of us like to tap, 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 tap and buy the Louis Gucci Prada. But we have to, we have to understand those things that are necessary and those things that are not necessary, right? And then the next 20% you want to put towards your savings and debt repayment. For debt, if you find yourself going over that 20% debt to income ratio, you really want to be aggressive with paying back your debt so that you can get yourself under that 20% and you are co able to comfortably manage those debt payments. Now, the other one is my favorite. Imagine, and I'm gonna use a very conservative number here, but imagine you're getting a thousand dollars on a monthly basis for your income. You look at that one thousand dollars and you divide it among every single thing that you want to achieve your basic necessities, your savings goals, your wants, your needs, all of that stuff until you have zero. Right? You take the thousand dollars and say, okay, one hundred dollars is gonna go towards my retirement. $200 is going to go towards the house. $300 is going to go towards my vacation. And then $500 goes towards the food and utilities, et cetera, et cetera, that you're taking care of. Essentially, you're taking that 1000 breaking it down until you reach the number zero. And always make sure that you're saving something, guys. That is the most important part. Now, when you're starting a budget, I want you to start by tracking your expenses. And I have something juicy for you. I will include a spending habit tracker in the resources that I'm sending you. And guys, trust me, it is fun, but it's also scary because when you look at some of the things that you're spending on, you'll be like, oh my God, did I just spend $1,000 and take out this month only? I went through this exercise with a client last week and he's like, Nayoka, um, there are four of us in the house. We spend $800 a month on food. I'm like, okay, no problem. Let us take a look at that. They spend $800 at the grocery store and a thousand dollars on takeout that's eighteen hundred dollars per month and he did not anticipate that he was spending that extra one thousand dollars so that's gonna be fun because you'll be able to find that extra money to put towards your goals and i want us to actually set goals a lot of us are going through life blindly without an aim in sight without an end in sight like Tell me something. Does anybody here know what their financial independence number is? Except for Yvonne, you're not allowed to raise your hand. <laughs> Does anybody know what their financial independence number is? Asset or liquid cash? Li let's say liquid cash. Well, in today's day and age with this market, um, I would say my base, our base as a household would be five. All right. 2.5 so, to five, and that's U.S. Wow. So Nikisha has a good idea. If she gets $5 million tomorrow, she knows that she's not going to be working anymore. And I like to use Usain as my example. People are like, oh, when I get to 65, I'll retire. That's retirement age. But guess what, guys? Retirement is not an age. It's a number. If Nikisha has her $5 million, she is good to go. She does not need to wait on anything else. All right. Well, that's not just me. 
That's because I for promised to retire my mom. Oh, wow. Yes. yes. Buy that off her be... house and retire her. Yeah. That's amazing. See, Sonny Keisha has it all thought out. I love that. And with that in mind, though, Nikisha, like you said, the market, you know, is kind of a little bit strange lately. So you want to make sure that you are reviewing your budget because that number might have slightly changed. And if it has changed, you want to make the adjustment necessary. And you want to use your budget as a tool, basically to simplify and organize your goals, making sure that you're prioritizing the ones that are closer, but also not forget getting the ones that are farther away all right once you understand your spending habits you will need to start getting rid of your debt if you have debt this is something that some people don't pay attention to they will say okay i'll just leave it there and i'll pay the minimum payment um on that debt a pile of uncontrolled debt guys will prevent you from achieving your financial goals Simply put, debt is any money you owe to anyone, and most times that money needs to be repaid with interest. So we want to be careful of having debt just sitting there because it's growing interest. And the longer it's there, the more you will have to repay. Let's say you bought a pair of shoes on your credit card and you decide that you're not going to pay it within a 30-day window, you're going to wait and you're going to pay the minimum payment. You may end up paying for that shoe two or three times. And I'll show you a little mathematics on that in just a second. But I just wanted us to look at this concept a little bit because it's not something that should be ignored. And here's something that you should keep in mind as well. This is not always bad. It can actually provide you with flexibility and convenience that can help you manage your money and provide for your lifestyle needs. When debt is used for good purposes, through care must be taken and debt must be balanced. So you don't want to be in a situation where you're taking on too much debt and you're not able to afford the payment. In these cases, when you're taking on good debt, these are some of the things that you would consider when you're doing that. Purchasing a home, purchasing appreciating assets or investments like buying a house. Um, in recent times, even though the housing market has been crazy, a lot of people have been delving in the market and buying investment properties. We know that a few years from now, those properties will appreciate and they will have equity that they can take advantage of. By the way, don't forget to invest in yourself because you are your biggest asset. So if you feel like you want to get more education, go ahead and get that education because it increases your value. And when your value is increased, you can demand more money for your services, right? So that is a good investment. Also, starting a business, if I didn't mention it, is a good investment because you will expect that business to generate income. Now, I have here use credit card, use credit card, use credit card. Essentially, guys, when you use debt, it doesn't have to be credit card. It could be a line of credit. It could be um, a second mortgage or any type of debt that you take out. If you're using it to supplement your lifestyle, I suggest that you examine your situation and see where you either need to increase your income or change your lifestyle to match your income because then you will be caught in a cycle where you may not be able to get out of. It may be that hamster on the wheel that keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, but doesn't know how to get that wheel to stop. It's kind of spiraling out of control. That is bad debt. You don't want to take on debt that you cannot manage to make the payments on or it's just something to make you feel good in the moment and then you end up paying interest on it. All right, so with that being said, since we want to ensure that you know we're 
reducing and or eliminating the debt, we want to consider how we're going to do that. Here are two strategies that you can use for repaying your debt. And if you don't know them, I am introducing them to you for the first time. If you know them already, I'm reintroducing them to you because sometimes it may seem so big, but it's so simple, right? The first one is the snowball method. You start by paying off the smallest balance. So imagine building a snowball. You take up a small amount of snow and you keep on adding, 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 adding until you have the base of the snowman, right? So you pay off the smallest debt and then once that debt is paid off, you continue rolling that amount up until you get to the largest debt. Let me give you an example. So let's say you have a credit card and the balance is $100. You pay that $100 the next month or the next two months, it's all paid off. Now let's say you are contributing $50 per month to that credit card and you have another credit card and the balance is 500 and you were paying $100 to that 500 hundred dollar credit card and when the one hundred dollar balance is done you're now paying a hundred and fifty dollars to the five hundred dollar card until it's done but let's say after the five hundred dollar card you have a fifteen thousand dollar card to tackle and you were paying two hundred dollars to that card now you're paying three hundred and fifty dollars to the fifteen thousand dollars card until it is fully paid off. And trust me, guys, this is a system that will allow you to feel rewarded. Oh my God, I finished paying off one. Oh my God, I finished paying off two. Wow, look at that. The $15,000 is slowly going down. So that is a structure that people who want to feel that immediate gratification of paying down the debt will love because you, know, you get rid of the first one right away. Then there's the avalanche method. I hope none of us have ever experienced that avalanche. I myself don't like the cold, so I would never want to experience experience this um but this is like being in the mountains and the snow just falls down the mountain on you right so with this one you start with the largest debt so you would start with the fifteen thousand dollars debt and pay the minimum balance on the other ones so let's say the minimum balance for the one hundred dollar balance is $5, you pay that $5. And then on the $500 balance is $10, you pay $10. But on the $15,000 card, you are now going to be paying um, $400 and let's say $30 to that card until it is paid off. The goal is to pay off the $15,000 card first and then work your way down to the others. And guys, I'm using the balance as an example, but you could also pay attention to the interest. In this situation, I would pay off the card with the highest interest rate first because potentially that is the card that would generate the most debt for you or the most payment for you in the long run. So getting rid of the highest interest rates sometimes can be the most beneficial for you. Have to do them, do a little bit of math to make this make sense because sometimes the highest balance may not necessarily have the highest interest rate or may not have any interest rate at all and can wait, whereas the lowest balance may have the highest interest rate and could potentially cause you the highest loss. So we want to make sure that we're paying attention to that. And with that being said, I want to teach you something some of you might have known it already, but if you have not known it, listen, guys, this is something that you really need to know. The rule of 72. Now, if you don't know him, Google the guy, Albert Einstein. He was a famous mathematician, and I will tell you a secret. He popularized this term, but it wasn't his. He stole it from someone, okay? And then he made it popular. So Albert says, take the number 72 and divide it by your interest rates. A lot of us have credit cards and those credit cards come with an interest rate of 19.99, but we're not going there yet. We're gonna talk about the interest rate that we're getting from the bank. From the chat earlier, I saw that we are mostly in Ontario. Listen, guys, 
secret, secret, the banks in Ontario are paying on average 0.2% interest rate on the money that you have in those accounts. If you didn't know that, go check it. When I first heard this, I was like, that's a lie. But when I went and checked my bank account, guys, I saw that I was getting 0.01% interest on my money. <laughs> I was like, somebody call the police. This is highway robbery. And I tried to figure out how to make my money work for me from there. And I'm showing you this because I want you to understand how to make your money work for you. If we are waiting for that 0.2% interest that, you know, conservatively we're being paid in Ontario, we'll have to wait 360 years to see our money double. Now, raise your hand if you're going to live 360 years. Anybody? nobody all right nobody i have a few clients that said that they will i asked them to write a book just in case i come back in another life i know exactly what to do but i know i'm not gonna live 360 years and i want to see my money double in my lifetime so guys this is what i want you to pay attention to when you go to the bank and they offer you a product what is the interest rate that they're offering you? Whether it be an investment account or a credit product, right? So let's imagine this is an investment account where Yvonne is earning 4% interest on her money. She's a young 29-year-old that decides that she's going to deposit $10,000. And she's super excited because by the time she reaches 65, it will be $40,000. But guess what? Nikisha says, Yvonne, since you're going to invest, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to go and invest as well. But Nikisha said, you know what? I want to outpace inflation by a little bit more than 1%. So I'm going to go for 8% interest. And Nikisha was able to secure 8% on her money. Now, look at this. It will take Yvonne 18 years to see her money double, but Nikisha will see her money double in nine years. Are you guys catching this or do I need to repeat myself? We're catching it. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Now, Akin. He will, I heard him say something earlier, but he's been quiet. But he's paying attention. He saw that Yvonne and Nikisha made some money. So he's like, ha, 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 let me go check this out. And he's a good negotiator. So he was able to get 12% on his money. Look at that, guys. At 12%, your money will double in six years. And this is assuming that you're not making any additional deposits. You just make that one ten thousand dollar deposit you leave it there and every year you're gaining a minimum of 12 percent interest on that money by the time he's a young handsome 29 year old depositing ten thousand dollars when he gets to 65 he'll have six hundred and forty thousand dollars for retirement and you know he's kind so he's going gonna go out and share this information with his friends now i would rather be in Akin's shoe than be in the shoe of the person who is investing at 0.2 percent because it means that when retirement comes i'm not gonna have any money or enough money but let's take this back to debt management guys if your credit card is at a 20% interest rate and you are paying the minimum payment, I'm sorry to break it to you, but in 3.6 years, the credit card company would have received twice the amount of money that you would have paid for the item in the beginning. This can be applied to your mortgage or anything else that you are considering to invest in or to borrow for. I want you to take this concept down and apply it in your life. It has changed my life significantly. It has changed many of my clients' life. Just knowing what to expect when you get to retirement, how much money you need to put aside for the house. You don't have to worry as much. Oh my God, it makes things so much easier. Guys, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who knows it, earns it. He who doesn't, 
details. Remember, I told you to write it down. Now, we know where we're going because we look at the expenses, we looked at our income, we looked at some ways that we can save. The next thing that I want you to do, and guys, my company is called Rich Revolution, so I'm about that rebellion. We are going to rebel against the financial norm. Instead of just saving our money in a bank account where it might not grow or it may not grow as much, we want to invest it. But we're not just going to invest it anywhere. We are going to create goals that reflect the things that we want to achieve in life, right? So you have to make your goal smart, but I kind of put a little twist on it and I'll send you this as well when I send you guys the email. So you want to make sure that you are making a realistic goal, a real goal, something that you can actually achieve. Don't set it. I mean, you can have a grand goal. I believe in those, but remember, Remember, you have to take baby steps, right? And write exactly what you want to achieve. In that process, you have to be brave and you have to understand what is the essence of what you want to achieve. Don't just pick something out of the hat that is not connected to you. Something that is connected to you personally, trust me, there will be a way for you to achieve it. If you are looking at $0 in your bank account today and you're telling yourself that you want $5 million in five years, if you have a strong why and a strong reason as to why you want to have that five million dollars in your account you will achieve it and you may even achieve it before five years but what i want you guys to do is to write everything down and do not forget to attach a time frame because without a time frame it may happen or it may never happen right when you tie yourself to a deadline you are most likely to achieve your goal right and we're not just gonna save money Money. You can save your money anywhere. Like I said, you can put it in an envelope. You can put it under your mattress, whatever you want to do. We're going to invest it so you can take advantage of compound growth. When you're investing your money, these are some things that I want you to think about. And I told you earlier that I'm going to touch a little bit on the bills because yes, they are necessities, but they aren't priorities. I'm going to repeat that. The bills are necessities, but they aren't priorities. You should be your number one priority. And listen to me. Yvonne, I need you to unmute for a second. I'm going to use you as my partner in crime at this time. Okay. All right. If I lend you... All right, let's put this the other way. If you borrow $10,000 from me, how likely are you to pay me back? If I borrow 10000 I'm going to pay you back. All right. You're going to pay me back. That is for sure, right? Mm -hmm, for sure. All right. Let me ask you another question. If you had $10,000 in your bank account and you borrowed that $10,000 from yourself, how likely are you to pay yourself back at the same speed that you would pay me back? Well, me, <laughs> I'll pay myself back. But I think most people, they'll, they they tend to like take care of other people and then they leave themselves out. Right. And that's it. I know if I, I may have chosen the wrong person to <laughs> assist me with this, but truth is when we borrow money from ourselves, we look at our account and we say, you know what, I'm going to borrow $10,000 from my retirement fund. And then something comes up here like, you know what, I don't have to put back the $10,000 right now. As a matter of fact, I have a client who borrowed some money from her account two years ago to lend to someone and she did not pay herself back right? She got the money back from the friend, but she never paid herself back. That's just how it goes. When we borrow from ourselves, we are not as willing to pay back. But guess what? The Enbridge, Hydro, Rogers, Fido, whoever, you can owe them. Hmm. I don't know if you knew that, but you can owe them. 
You can call them and say, hey, Mr. Fido, I don't have the money for you for this month, but I would like to make a payment arrangement with you. I can pay you $50 today, $50 tomorrow, and $50 three months down the line. They want their money, so they will make that arrangement with you. The reason I am telling you this, guys, is because I want you to prioritize your future. If you decide that you are going to save towards your retirement, save towards your retirement. If you're going to save towards buying your home, save towards buying your home. Hydro, Fido, whoever, they're not going to come and take money out of their pocket to give to you so that you can get to where you want to go. Don't quote me a saying, don't pay a bill. <laughs> Please pay your bill and try to pay your bill on time, but prioritize paying yourself and don't take it from me. I want you to go read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or read the book, Richest Man in Babylon. There's a third book that says the same thing, but the name is not coming off the top of my head right now. But once you prioritize paying yourself, you will get ahead financially. Eventually that compound interest will work in your favor. But if you prioritize paying Tom, Dick and Harry, then they will compound their money and they will become rich and you won't, right? Also, when you're saving and investing, create an emergency fund, please, guys, because emergencies will come up. Again, I'm giving you a story. 2018, I was set. Everything good, nothing to worry about. But guess what? I found out that my mom had kidney disease. We did not have an emergency fund or any kind of backup. So guess what? I spent all my investments and I had to start over. So this is me imploring you don't have the same experience that I did. Create an emergency fund and it is for emergencies. So use it in an emergency and then protect your ability to earn an income. If you had an accident like I did this week, I fell down the stairs and fractured my knee. Some of us would not be able to go to work, right? Which might mean that you would not be able to earn an income for that period of time. However, if you're able to have an alternate source of income during that period of time, you don't have to worry about your savings and investment costs. Trust me, you meet in a car accident or not, the bills keep coming. Also, this is something that I want you guys to think about and to focus on. How are you being taxed? Do you know? And I will tell you this, you earn it, they tax you. You save it, they tax you. You spend it, they tax you. And if you didn't know, when you die, you are still being taxed. You heard it here first. I want to share this with you. I'm coming close to the end. So please, if you have any questions, do not be shy. When you are saving and investing in North America, but we're going to stick specifically to Canada, you are taxed in pretty much three categories. You're taxed yearly. So if you have an open savings, checking stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, or a GIC account, those accounts, you get a tax slip at the end of the year and you're being taxed on any growth that you have in those accounts. So if you invest $1,000 and that $1,000 grow by $100, that $100 is being taxed. Then there's another category, the tax later accounts. So you see the RRSP, RESP, and any type of capital gains that you will earn on properties, or if you have any pensions, those will be taxed later. Let's use the RRSP for an example. Um, Nikisha knows that her FIN financial independence number is 5 million, and this is for her and her family, right? Now, let's say... She amasses that $5 million, she gets to retirement, she starts to collect income. At retirement, she'll be paying taxes on that money. But um, iPhone, I am glad that you're here. If you can mute, that would be helpful for me. Thank you. All right, so while Nikisha is 
accumulating this money. She's not paying any taxes on the money and she will get tax refunds. There will be benefits for her saving and investing this money, right? And if she reinvests that uh, tax return that she's getting on the money, it will be even better for her because she's compounding more money so that she can get to her retirement goal even faster. So instead of retiring at 55, she may be able to retire at 50 or 45, right? So the RRSP is an example of an account that is taxed later. Some people misunderstand it, but trust me, if you understand the RRSP account, you would take advantage of it. RESP, it is also a tax later account. It is taxed at the hand of the child. So when the child gets to university and they access the money, they will pay tax based on their tax rate. So just to give you an idea of those. Now you have some tax advantage accounts accounts the tax-free savings account the first home savings account listen if you are planning on buying a house go open a first home savings account it is the best account out there right now it's like if an rrsp and a tfsa had a baby and <laughs> there is this new account that is created you have the advantage of the reduced income that the rrsp has and the tax-free growth that the TFSA has brought together in one account. So if you have $8,000 that you're planning on putting towards a house in the next 15 years and you've never bought a house before, get a first home savings account because you get tax benefits and you also grow and access your money tax-free. Another way that you can grow your money tax deferred and access your money tax free in some ways is through permanent life insurance policies. Guys, if you did not know this, you hear it here today. All right. There are life insurance policies out there that allows you to grow your money in a tax sheltered way. I am going to leave it there. It is important for you to consider the impact that taxes will have on your income. Bimbo, you had something to share? No? Okay. All right. So it's not about how much you um, earn guys it's how much you keep and if you can save on taxes trust me that is a big keep in some places you are able to even save 50 percent of the taxes that you would be paying on a normal basis so i just want you to keep that in mind and i want to share one last thing with you. The only way to be truly financially healthy is to outpace inflation. That means preparing for long-term goals while you're enjoying life. Now, procrastination can be the enemy of your success. In preparing for your future, think about retirement. So many people forget about retirement. And I didn't come from a wealthy family. A wealthy family will come from me. So I can tell you my mom and all her siblings, they did not retire um, at retirement age. They all had to go back to work. My uncle and my aunt, they are 70 and they're still working. Like I refer clients to my uncle because he's in the same industry as me. So imagine that guys at 70, he cannot afford to retire because he did not have a proper pension plan in place. This is why it's important to plan for retirement. No, don't wait. And if you've started, try to find out actually how much money you need for retirement because you can't just be saving for retirement and don't know how much money you will need to survive that time. I have this illustration on the screen because at all stage in life, we have an excuse as to why we cannot save, be it for retirement or anything else. Um, age 25 and younger, we're saying, oh, we're just getting started. We'll save more when we're making more, right? When we get to our 40s, we're like, oh, yes, I have the house. I'm making payments. I have other debt. I have the kids. I can't do that now. Then before you know it, we are 50. And then we're like, oh, my God, the kids are going to be out right? And we will be able to start saving for retirement soon. But guess what? You blink and it's 60. 
And you're like, the expenses are too much. We cannot afford to save for retirement. And then guess what? You're at retirement age with no retirement income. So it doesn't matter when you, where you are in life, there will always be something. But guess what? The earlier you start, the smaller the amount that you will need to save. So if you are on here and you're in your 20s, you're in luck. Start saving even $50 a day towards your retirement. If you're not in your 20s, you are still in luck. You have time. We can work something out. We can figure something out. Just get started. I said it already. The more time you have, the smaller amounts you will need to set aside each month to achieve your goals. Getting started is often the most difficult step. Take that step, guys. It is a first step in achieving your financial goals. Doesn't matter where you are, just get started. I want to con you to consider your options. You can do nothing. I mean, this was a very informative session and I hope you at least take away the rule of 72. You can take that habit, maybe go read The Richest Man in Babylon or Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and just continue on the same path that you are on, right? Or you can work independently to achieve your financial goals and hopefully you will get there. I have all confidence in you. Or you could get the support in achieving your financial goals with a professional, someone that can help you to identify the gaps, someone that can help you to create clear goals, and someone that can help you to take massive action to achieve the things that you want to achieve in this life and experience the ultimate rich life. Now, guys, I'm offering you the opportunity to have your financial health check with me. We can define your goals, create your monthly budget, look at your spending habits. I don't know. I find this part fun. You may find it traumatic, but I find it fun. I think when you see these things, it, it kind of just highlights one, who you are, what your priorities are, and if you need to change your priorities, right? Then we can identify investments for you and figure out, you know, what your strategy is. Are we going to do a taxable account, a tax deferred account or a tax advantage account? But most importantly, I am able to help you to find those accounts that will give you that 12% return or if you want to be a little bit more conservative we can find those accounts as well but the idea is to put it all in action we cannot just sit by and wait we need to act and the outcome is that we will shift protect and grow your money thank you guys so much for being here. It was a pleasure for everybody who participated. I appreciate you. Just remember just a few years ago, I personally did not understand the rules of money and it took me some reading and some real learning to know the things that I know today personally and through client experience. And I'm able to share that with you so you don't have to go through the same pitfalls that me and my clients did. On the screen, this is a different QR code, so I'm going to ask you to scan it again. Let my phone light up when you scan it and add my telephone number to your directory. I will get a notification as well. You can follow me on Instagram. You can look me up on LinkedIn. Whatever you want to do, you basically just have an open profile on me, guys. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, I am here for you. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So much, uh, man, I've been taking notes, man. This is so, so much insights and, you know, so good. Your budget is your GPS, create yes. an emergency fund. <laughs> yeah, you see, you see, I've been taking notes. I've been taking <laughs> notes. I've been listening. So really, really good. Amazing session. Guys, if you have any questions, please just raise your hand and then uh, ask your question. There is a question in the uh, chat box uh, from Junior. Uh, where can you get 8%, 12% interest on your money? 
All right, that's a very good question, Junior. There are so many financial institutions that are available to offer you that. I can give you two examples right off the top of my head, Equitable Life and Industrial Alliance. They work with brokers like myself, so you would have to come to me. We would sit, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, and then we would find the best investment that matches your risk tolerance. It's Another Chris question. Asked, do you think it's better to invest in real estate or with mutual funds or ETFs? That's a good question, Chris. I love that you asked that question and I'm not going to give a yes or no answer. You're welcome, Junior. So my answer to that question is diversify. It is important to diversify your assets. I believe in real estate. I think real estate is a no-brainer. So if you can afford to um, invest in real estate, and it doesn't have to be a huge investment, it could be a partnership. You can invest in real estate through um, a company like Equitable bank i think they're called that's not their name i'll tell you guys in the email that i sent you send you open with five thousand <laughs> say that again back in i said oh pamuja but go on or pamuja <laughs> there you go <laughs> actually had a friend inquire about pamuja recently so i hope he invested with you guys but yes you can invest in real estate you could also invest in mutual funds. For tax purposes, I would say check out segregated funds. Um, when it comes to investing in mutual funds, the taxation of it may not be as advantageous of a segregated fund. So I would say look into a segregated fund. There are also more benefits and guarantees when it comes to investing in segregated funds as well. So explore your options, diversify, and always make sure you do your research. Because guess what, guys? Again, sharing a personal story, last year I invested in a company and that investment was not worth it. So always, always, always do your research when you're investing. Also had a client who came to me recently and um she was approached by an investment banker to invest in real estate in the United States. Turned out to be fraud. So again, make sure that you're doing your research. But diversify. I hope I answered your question, Chris. By the way, just to add to that, when you invest in real estate, your liquid assets now becomes illiquid. So if you have an emergency or you want to in reinvest, you don't have access to that cash. So investing in liquid assets is important as well. I would say set a goal for both fixed assets and liquid assets. So you always have liquid cash on hand and you don't have to liquidate your fixed assets in an emergency or in a situation where you need cash. Questions? So excited. She looked like she's burning up with something. Share it with us, Yvonne. <laughs> Hearing you, you're muted. While everyone is trying to find the mute button, it's 6.14. I don't look at the time when I'm talking, guys. I'm just filled with fire and passion. So thank you so much for staying with us for this whole 14 minutes after the time is up. Trust me, you can always reach out to me, whether it's on, in well, not Instagram. I'm locked out of my Instagram. So give me a couple of days with that. But you can text me, call me, um, book on my Calendly link, that QR code. It gives you access to me anywhere. So please don't hesitate to reach out. And Nikisha, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, 
yeah, I'm available to you guys if you have any questions. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's really good. Thanks for, um, you know, for your insightful, uh, you know, session. I would really appreciate the fact that you took out time this evening to share with us. Um, I'll definitely be in touch. I'm not sure about other people. I think I have to go over certain things, especially subscriptions. I have too many of them. Definitely. Yeah. So, you know, I have too many. Sometimes I check my, you know, my credit card and I'm like, what is this again? I don't even remember. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to receiving that uh, uh, spreadsheet uh, subscription tracker, I believe you called it. I'm yes. Looking forward to, uh, to getting that. And I'm um, definitely... I will be in touch and thank you again uh, for joining. You're welcome. Okay, great. Awesome. It was my pleasure. Have a good evening, guys. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Nayoka. Have a great day. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.